by the authorities and banned from preaching. The church prayed and two men witnessed with great power and grace. And people prayed everywhere in one accord, in repentance, with confession and humility, and the lives of people were changed. Two men started out on a missionary journey that would turn the world as they knew it upside down. And the message went out to the world beyond. Corporate prayer helped a prisoner escape. A king requested that his people fast and pray, and the enemy was defeated. A battle won without the need to fight. Through a faithful servant and a young queen's faith and courage, a people were saved. Stories in the Bible showing the power of united prayer. Good morning and happy Sabbath. God has wonderful things in store for us today. I'm Elder Gary Gibbs, President of Pennsylvania Conference, and with me is Elder Sean Shives, Assistant to the President, as well as serving as pastor of the Reading Hampton Heights Church. Sean has pulled together this wonderful day that we're going to experience here. He's our prayer leader for uh, Pennsylvania Conference for the By My Spirit Strategic Initiative. We have eight initiatives in the conference. I'll tell you more about that later, but this is the number one most important one. Sean, what are we going to experience today? Thank you, Elder Gibbs. Uh, today, we have a wonderful program um, in store for you today. We're gonna begin today, as soon as we're done here, we're, we're going, you're gonna hear people from around our conference praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, uh, members from Western Pennsylvania, Eastern Pennsylvania, asking God to bless this program today and to touch us to, uh, in our hearts. And then after that, we'll have Elder Tim Bailey, our ministerial director, is gonna lead a Sabbath school program. Uh, and, it's and you're gonna hear faith in action, mm. God moving, how he's moved throughout our conference, Amen. how miracles have happened, how people have come to Jesus through prayer. Amen. Then when we're done there, you're going to hear more prayer, more testimonies in between that segment. Then we go into our worship service, Elder Gibbs, and that is going to be wor uh, wonderful uh, today because we actually have a, a well-known speaker, uh, Pastor Derek Morris, coming with us today to sp uh, speak to us. Well, that's a blessing. He's, of course, the president of Hope Channel, and he's no stranger to us here in Pennsylvania. He actually started his ministry, pastoral ministry, here in Pennsylvania Conference. It's amazing how God has used people from Pennsylvania to do amazing things throughout the vineyard for his cause. That won't be all. We actually have uh, wonderful music today, special music, and there'll be chances throughout the day for you to sing, for you to pray. There'll be segments where you, as members of our, our conference, as, as participants in this day, to stop and have prayer and ask God to touch you personally, your churches, and uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, segmented throughout the day for that. Also, the last meeting in the afternoon is gonna be a wonderful call just to come back to Jesus and be used by Jesus, and Pastor Morris will be doing that also at the end of the, uh, the meeting today. Now, so you don't wanna miss anything happening today, whether you're at church or at home, you are able to join this wonderful experience of seeking God together. We have a goal today, a goal to have 3,000 of you sign up and say, I want to pray for the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. And I want to invite you to pray about that, just to say, Lord, can you use me? Will you use me? And will you please use me? I want to invite you to pray about signing up today. Go into our website. We'll also have a card in the churches later today where you'll be able to say, Lord, I want to be used by you to pray for the outpouring of the Spirit. So may God bless you today as we worship together all over the Pennsylvania Conference and around the world. Good morning. Uh, we're here at the Hamden Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church in, outside of Reading, Pennsylvania. And this morning at our pavilion where we hold our worship services, we're praying for God's power to be poured out upon the meetings we're about to enter into. So we're asking our members here this morning, a group of us, to pray together for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together. 
We come to you, Lord, because you are our King. You hear our prayers and you answer them according to your will. We ask you now to just pour out your spirit upon these meetings that are being held today. We pray for your um, voice to be heard, that your spirit will be felt upon each heart and that it comes to listen. And we thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. We pray now and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer. And, and 2,000 years ago, the disciples came in one accord, praying for the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon them that what you have in store for this world can be realized through them. And we pray for that same spirit today, that you will pour it out, that we may be a people of power by way of the Holy Spirit. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for uh, bringing us here today, and we thank you for uh, everything that you've done for us so far today, and, and we, uh, we pray that you uh, be with the ones that are here and be with their families, and we, we ask you to uh, touch some hearts uh, and have some conversions, and um, we, just, uh, we just love you, Lord, and we just want to do your will, and we just uh, hope uh, and pray just be with us today, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this moment that we can share. We thank you so much, Lord, for your point of view, the Spirit, and this church. We pray that you bless each and every one here today, all the members, and for those who come in to visit. We pray, Lord, that you would um, bless us and keep us safe, Lord, from all this stuff that's going on. And we pray that you bless your pastor, bless our elders, and bless all the members. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, this morning as we stand here, we remember the when you left the whole, when you left your disciples, you said, I will send a comforter, the Holy Spirit. And he came. And he is here with us now. But we ask, Father, for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit such as not been that we will be able to see the soon coming of our Savior Jesus Christ we ask this in Jesus name Amen. Heavenly Father may this day be another day of Pentecost where your spirit may be poured out in a mighty way upon thy people that we may effectively because of your spirit filling us Bring the message to the whole world of Jesus and the soon coming that we can experience. We pray, Lord, that you will be with Dr. Morris as he shares your word today. And we pray that it may touch the hearts and lives of many people. And may we go forward to see the work finished in our lifetimes. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Father in heaven, this time we want to ask you for the Holy Spirit to be here in Pennsylvania Conference in this effort and these meetings, and especially in the, with the Pastor Morris as he's going to be preaching. We want the Holy Spirit to touch the heart of the people in Pennsylvania. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Father, as we close this prayer time, we thank you for hearing our prayers today. Uh, I just echo the prayers of my brothers and sisters here today that you would use this day and empower your people today. I pray we would be called to action. I pray we would be called to do great things for you, that we'd expect great things for you and accomplish great things for you. So bless this day. May it be used for the betterment of the Pennsylvania Conference. May we go out and do amazing things for you. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Sabbath School. I'd like to, to welcome you to this special t uh, feature here today, mm -hmm. Faith in Action. It's a Sabbath School that Lily and I will be moderating, and we're going to watch and witness testimonies of lives changed. Not only lives of the church members, but lives of the community. Let's just bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, this morning we're gathered here this Sabbath morning for a Sabbath School segment that hopefully will be inspiring. And I know that there are others who have been inspired in the stories. They're sharing their faith and they're reaching individuals 
who may have never had an opportunity unless someone reached out to them. So I pray this morning as, as we view and we witness these videos that our hearts will be stirred to action, faith in action, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the Holy Spirit's touching a lot of people's lives, Lillian, all across the, our conference during this Amen. pandemic. There's been a lot of individuals that have still been reached for Jesus. And so the aim of this segment is to glorify God and to encourage not only you and I, mm -hmm. but others within our church to reach out to individuals in our community, our, our friends, family, neighbors, and coworkers. And I wanna just share with you one little disclaimer. Some of the video quality is better than others. Sometimes we have to just pause for a moment and listen. And maybe the Holy Spirit will use that opportunity for you to, to really set everything aside and pay special attention as we reach out to others. Mm, amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Um, this morning, Tim, I'm excited because I was able to listen to all these amazing stories, how the Holy Spirit is working on the lives of people. We'll have stories regarding members engaging for the first time. We have individuals that have come home after um, being away from the church for several years. We have um, also stories of our young people involved. So I'm excited about the different things that are going on across our conference and how the Holy Spirit is working on the hearts of people. So wow. I want to start off, Tim, by a quote that it's one of my favorite quotes. While, and while you're looking that up, I just want to say that I'm encouraged as we, we see total member involvement all across our conference in this yeah, and I, and I appreciate this opportunity that we can show people's faith in action, how they're taking that mm -hmm. step of faith, and they may be nervous, they may not know how to do these things, but just to see how the Lord has blessed their faith is mm -hmm. encouraging to me. So, Tim, the, the um, quote I wanted to share with you as we um, see our first video here, our first testimony, is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, page 109. And it says, there are many who are reading the scriptures who cannot understand their true import. All over the world, men and women are looking wistfully to heaven. Prayers and tears and inquiries go up from souls looking, longing for light, for grace, for the Holy Spirit. Many are on the verge of the kingdom waiting only to be gathered in. So our first um, video that we're going to watch is of just a few people that were in the Valley of Decision. They were searching, and I can relate to that because that was me. I was reading the Bible at home, wanting to know what does this all mean? And it's a video by Matthew Romney. Divine Encounters. So let's look at this one. Hi, my name is Matthew Roney, and this is my story. I'm the middle child of an older sister, younger brother, and every Sunday, our parents would take us to a Methodist church. There have been several times in my life where God saved me from death. I had a Pontiac GTO, 2005 Pontiac GTO with mods on it that was made for racing. I loved the race, I was very reckless. I did not, I thought I was invincible as many young people do. Um, I was racing one night and not in the best judgment, I was going about 150 miles an hour down Route 100 and spun out around a bend and went into a guardrail and a gully again. And the airbags went off and that, everything, but the car was not totaled and I walked out without a scratch. I was not a devout Christian, even though I went to the Methodist church every Sunday and heard the pastor give his sermon and try to explain the truth of God. I was not hearing it. I began to feel very down from the world and I, I had a self-infliction of torment. I began to yearn for the truth and want to know where evil originates from. I started to go online and type in, you know, origin of sin, origin of evil, and I found a YouTube channel where the members of the YouTube, YouTube channel kept the Sabbath. They preached uh, immersed baptism and that's where I learned that the Sabbath is truly the seventh day. My quest on YouTube led me to Doug Batchelor's Origin of Evil video. And in that video, I learned the truth of God. I learned his character. I learned his love for us. I learned what the cross meant. My whole life, I've always heard people say, 
Jesus died on the cross for us, but I, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know that it came from a place of divine love that we can't comprehend. God was leading me in the truth, and he saw that I wanted to find a church that observed the Sabbath. I was having a difficult time finding it. I did not know SDA existed, but little did I know God was about to change that. I was on a, I was on a online dating site, and I met a girl on there that was SDA, but I didn't even know she was SDA until about two weeks later. When I started hanging out with her family and her, we she said that she was an Adventist, a Seventh-day Adventist, and I said, really? You guys keep the Sabbath? And I was like, well, I want to come check out your church because I've been looking for a church that observes the Sabbath and, you know, teaches and preaches the scripture. That led me to finding SDA. I then began looking online for a church near me. I saw a church close to me, but the activity feed on their website was, it had not been updated in a long time. I didn't think they were still, you know, uh, worshiping the Sabbath. So I went to the next one, and I saw Westchester SDA. I saw Pastor Tom Henlon, and at the message saying, anyone's welcome to come worship the Sabbath and, and the Lord. So I emailed Pastor Tom Henlon, and then I received a reply back, and here I am. I was sent links to watch online Bible study for SDA teachings, and I loved how everything was from the Bible. There was no tradition or an injection of man's thoughts. It was all strictly the good word of God and prophecy to come. After watching the Bible studies, I made a decision to be baptized, and I will be baptized August 8th, 2020. I want you all to know that there are thousands of other people out there just like me who want the truth and want to change their lives for the better. So please don't give up. Keep preaching the truth. Keep sending it out there. We know we all need it. I'm Matthew Roney, and this is my story. Wow, I really enjoyed uh, that. Our websites do need to keep be updated. Mm -hmm. uh, we would have lost that chance at Westchester unless uh, Pastor Tom Henline and, and Manny had uh, that and their church members had that up to date. But the most exciting thing that Matt said to me, Lillian, was there are thousands of others just like him out there mm -hmm. searching and wanting to receive Jesus. That's a real call for us as church members to, to be ready at a moment's notice to reach out. It is. It's encouraging because it goes back to that Acts of the Apostle that I just read, that there are many on the verge of the kingdom mm -hmm. just waiting to be gathered in. And I want to make a comment on that website too, Tim. I heard someone says that the church website now is the new front door. It is. So it is. if we really want to attract people, especially young people, then we need to be on top of our website to make sure that it's active, that it's up to date, that it's exciting, that it seems like there's things happening in that church and people want to be part of that church. Ellen, if this gray-haired old man can realize that the importance of a website, how much more important it is for young people. Absolutely. In fact, my children, they, they look at the website and that is their entire mm -hmm. decision whether they go to any place, whether it's a place of worship or a resource that they want to gather information from. If the website is not easy, convenient, and attractive, mm -hmm. they just discredit the whole organization. Think about this. God led Matthew to the front door of the church. Mm -hmm. They did nothing. They just had to welcome him in. And it's exciting to see that he was baptized. Amen. So the next one, Tim, is um, mm -hmm. regarding how there's been so many of our members who have left the church, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So there is um, so many people out there. And I think during this pandemic, many of them have sort of looked at their lives and realize that they needed to come back. I don't know about you, but I've heard quite a few say that also. Sure. So I wanted to share this Bible verse that's in Lamentations 340, and it says, mm -hmm. let us examine and probe our ways and let us return to the Lord. You know, Lillian, Dominic, the head elder of the church that we're gonna show in just a moment, uh, talking with Lisa, has been faithful for many years. Amen. He and his family have been continually reaching out to the community, holding on and having worship through many mm. uh, challenges and adversities. And just like Dominic's faithfulness, all of our church members who hold on mm -hmm. and continue to reach out, God is going to pull people out of the woodwork, just like Lisa, as you'll see in a moment. Yeah, so I'm excited about this testimony. My son and his fiance are coming from Ohio 
Uh, my husband's coming. He's bringing my mother. Um, so they're all coming to see me get rebaptized tonight. So I'm very excited, very happy. You know, a little nervous. Yeah. Yeah, Lisa <laughs> told me that uh, right away that uh, she used to come here. Uh, and then uh, after she used to come here 20 plus years ago, and now she felt like uh, the Lord uh, has been prompting her to come back. For whatever reason, I, you know how life is, I somehow got away from the church. Uh, just, I'm, I'm really not sure my, my mother was kind of like, you know, she wasn't happy about it and, and just, just different things sort of just took me away, um, which was not, not a good thing, but um, I did get away from the church at that time after about a couple years. I've had some health issues, some serious health issues. You know, I'm getting older and I thought, you know, when you're young, you think you're just young and invincible and you don't, you don't need anybody. You don't need God. You don't, you're just, you know, you're, you know, I'm young and nothing's going to hurt me or whatever. But you find out as you get older that, you know, things happen in your life, maybe physically, emotionally, whatever, as you get older, that you do need God in your life. And, and your family needs God in their life. And I just felt drawn to come back to the church, that it did make an impact on my life. I did get away from it for about 23 years, but I felt drawn to come back. Well, there were some familiar faces which made me feel good. I was a little nervous though when I first came in. I was very nervous, like, oh, you know, I haven't been here in a long time. And, you know, they're like, who is that person sitting there? And, and just things just go through your head. Like, you know, you just get a little nervous because people don't know who you are. There was a couple people that did remember me, though, which was nice. So it kind of made me feel more comfortable after. But then after everything was over, everybody came over to me, was talking to me, welcomed me into the church, which made me feel very comfortable. And then there was a few people that I did know, which made things a lot better. And after that, everything was just smooth sailing from there. But like right after the first service, I'm, I was good to go. And then finally, uh, one of those Sabbaths, he told us that he wanted to get baptized. Uh, the church, uh, our only part was to provide a safe uh, environment for her, a place where she can grow uh, in her knowledge of God. A, uh, uh, we pro the only thing we did is to provide a place where, a platform where she can dig uh, at a much deeper level the God's word. And at the end of the day, I think we're working with her uh, through this process from the time she the first he came here and then the time she expressed uh, her willing to, willingness to be baptized. I have uh, re, re, you know, just given my life again to God that I've turned this is this time I'm so much more serious about turning my life over to God and letting him take, you know, take care of my life and not me and thinking I can do it all. So seeing that, you know, I am re recommitting my life to Christ, which is the most important thing. Uh, everything was a blessing to me. Uh, it tells me that uh, it's God's department to, uh, to redeem people, to call them uh, back to his fold. And uh, it reminds me again that uh, our only main role, the church role, is to simply cooperate with him when, uh, he's, when he starts prompting people to come back to him. I would say, yes, I understand that you would feel nervous, that that's normal, but I, I wanna tell you, please, if you're, you're thinking about coming back, come back because you'll come back, you will feel welcome in the church, everybody will welcome you, there's nothing to be nervous about, and, I'll, and I think you'll be very happy that you, you did, because I know I was very nervous, but I just think by you just making that step and putting your foot into the church, then you'll find it, there's nothing really to be scared of. The people will welcome you to the church and you will feel loved. And she felt the call on her heart to give her life again to God and uh, full consecration. Lisa, it, it is an honor and a privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.
Thank God Lisa felt at home. Amen. Amen. And that she's back home safely in the foe again. Amen. Amen. The, the next one, I want to start off with this Bible verse, and it's, it's found in 1 Corinthians 3, 6. And it says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. More and more, Tim, I'm realizing it takes total member involvement. Amen. You know, sometimes we think that we have to do it all. But here in this story, we'll see that it took a, a, a several people to leave Kevin and Brenda in their path mm -hmm. to the Lord. Hi everyone, glad to be with you on this special Sabbath. We have a little story we'd like to tell you. The story is about Kevin and Brenda and how it takes a village of church people to bring people across the line to join the church. Kevin and Brenda came into my life a few years ago. They've really become good friends. They would stop by the church from time to time and never committed to every Sabbath, but from time to time they would come here. And as we became friends, Kevin wanted to have some Bible studies. I was giving him the studies and he was really inspired with the Sabbath message. In fact, so much so that it was in his heart and mind. And for a while, uh, he was contemplating what to do about it. And so he started to look to other churches to see uh, what they believed. And no matter where he went, he was always coming back to the Hamburg church here and uh, being reminded of the seventh day Sabbath. Uh, the Sabbath really stuck in my heart when I came to this church years ago. I went through many churches, every denomination you could imagine. I asked about the Sabbath. Some believed in the Sabbath, but they didn't practice the Sabbath. Um, I got discouraged and would come back to uh, the Seventh-day Adventist church where I ran into a group of people, well, people were put into my life, I believe, by Jesus, that helped me grow. Well, Kevin came to our church, and uh, we, we talked with him, and he, we knew that he wanted a Bible study. One of the big issues with him was that he wanted to get baptized, and he was really uh, intent on doing that. He had a problem with smoking. So he, this is what the force was that brought us to have the Bible study with him. At first it was Randy and I, and uh, we had, had good studies, and then Randy got busy, and I just carried it on then. And the, the time that I had the studies with him was like how Eric said, it was good for both of us. And the studies went pretty deep, and they got pretty personal with God in our lives, and, and the Holy Spirit especially, considering the weaknesses that we both had and we shared, and uh, we realized where the help was. And this helped us together to understand things better as, as time went on. So we had these studies and uh, Kevin was, was very interested and we studied together for I think a couple months and then the COVID came and that's sort of like where it ended then. I was coordinator for Hope Awakens and I had to get people's names together with somebody who would pray for them. And because Eric was a male and all the other names were, were females, um, I assigned Kevin to my husband. And so that's where Eric steps into the story. Yeah, she gave me the, num uh, the name for Kevin and um, I was a little bit nervous about it. I'm doing the vi virtual Bible workers, but I haven't actually done this before. This is all new to me. Uh, but I reached out to him, I texted him, um, and it was a great conversation, you know, it was, it, we actually, actually hit it off really well right from the start. Uh, I even asked if he wanted me to call and pray, uh, pray with him that very night, and he wasn't ready for that yet, which, totally cool, I understand that. Um, but our friendship just grew, and it was more not just me sharing Jesus with him, it was Kevin sharing Jesus with me as well. We would constantly pray for each other, share, each, uh, share Bible verses with each other, uh, just to uplift each other. Eric has been a big blessing in my life. And my, through Eric, my wife met Shauna, which Shauna has been a big blessing in my wife's life. Me and Kevin went to different, all different kind of churches, and I had said to him, 
he had said that to check out Seventh Day Adventist, and I'm like, well, I'll check out one more church, and I'm done. I'm not <laughs> going church to church to church. And we found this church, and awesome people, Lisa, Lillian, Pastor, um, Shauna, all awesome people. Everybody's so nice at the church. Lisa and I uh, started giving virtual Bible lessons to Kevin and Brenda, and uh, He's come, he's come a long way. Our, our Bible lessons haven't gone that far yet. I've been a short, very short part of this, but uh, you, uh, you can see growth every time you talk to him. And uh, I want to be there to be a help to uh, inspire him and to help him keep going, to reach his final goals, and to actually watch him get down in the waters of baptism. So that's my hope for Kevin. I'm looking forward to baptism. I want to be baptized into the Remnant Church. So someone may be watching today and wondering, you know, I, they just don't feel comfortable witnessing because they feel like they have nothing to offer. And Sean, I'm just wondering, can you share some advice with that person? Well, everybody has some gifts. God has given you something. So use what you have and just help one person. Just start small and just move them one step closer to Jesus. So Shauna, I want to agree with you wholeheartedly. Yes. Use what you have. Church members, as, as, as mm -hmm. you watch these inspiring stories, don't let them just be inspiring stories. Let them motivate you to action. I want to encourage you to reach out to someone, friends, family, coworkers, neighbors, whatever it may be, or even a total stranger. Wherever God leads you, please use what you have. Mm. I like that. Just, just take that first step, which leads us to uh, the next video, which is actually about a member. I like the way he says his journey from going from an attender to now a leader and engaging in ministry. So we're going to listen to Paul um, and see how the Lord has used him as he took a step of faith in engaging in ministry. So uh, the way that I went from uh, my journey from becoming a tender to a leader in a church was, you know, uh, we were, I, I've been churched my whole life and uh, had the opportunity to start coming to the Simple Way Church and uh, enjoyed the the ministry, enjoyed just how real everything was. I really enjoyed uh, that it was a real, it was a come as you are and it was meant for unchurched people. Uh, so it felt like it was a space that, um, that I was being called to and uh, enjoyed the service and the camaraderie. And then, uh, pastor John had asked, um, he had asked about me leading church. He said, we're getting too big for our church and we want to break off and, and start again and, and asked about me leading, uh, in, in my home. And my first answer was no. And, um, you know, and, and at the time I was so focused on my career and just how busy uh, I would be. And I was like, I wouldn't have time for it. And so it was really, I was just pulling a Jonah where God was calling, but I was running. And, uh, you know, that uh, Pastor John just kept asking kindly and uh, he would wait a few weeks and ask again. And, but really it was the Holy Spirit that was just working with me. And, and I think that the thing that had changed in my mind was just spending time with God and saying, um, God essentially letting me know that he's not going to let me fail which is one of the things that I was af afraid of. I was afraid that I wouldn't have time, that, uh, that something would fall through the cracks, that I wouldn't be a good uh, leader of a, of a small group of a church. And uh, he told me that that's, it's, that's fine, I got you. Uh, and so uh, Pastor John asked again, and I said, all right, let's, let's give it a shot. And I ended up asking uh, my neighbors to come to church, and they did. And, um, at that point began asking other people just because it was getting, it felt easier. It felt more comfortable because it was my house. So it didn't seem like there was the barrier of someone um, not wanting to come to a church, but they were just, they were either saying yes or no to my house, which was different. And so it was the, the craziest thing because I was on social media and I was, I was on Facebook and we were getting ready for our 20 year high school reunion. And we had selected a date and I was, gonna go and she had posted in the group she said oh sorry I can't be there but God bless you all and and all the years that I had known Crystal I, I didn't know her to, to use language like God bless you which doesn't seem like crazy language it just doesn't seem like it didn't seem uh, familiar so 
I was like, that's interesting. I wonder what's happened in her life that, that allowed her to say that at this stage in her life. So I reached out to her privately. I sent her a message on Facebook and said, hey, you said God bless you in the message. I haven't heard you say that before, but I'm guessing that God is in your life in a different space. And, and I wanted to know if you wanted to come to our church. We do church in my house and I live in Carrick. And she said, no way, I live in Carrick. And I was like, what? Um, so I didn't, I, had, I didn't even know where she stayed, uh, but we are actually about two blocks away from each other. And when I told her that I live in Carrick and we're, we're doing church in my house, I was prepared to go pick her up wherever she was, but she said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm right up the street. And so she, it was an immediate yes. Um, you know, she, it went from a post on Facebook saying, God bless you to um, me inviting her and her immediately saying yes. And she came and she's been coming ever since. Sharing my faith has become important to me because it is, um, I, I, the journey that I've been on has, has been one that I think is familiar. Um, and so I thought that sharing your faith had to be this really very particular way of asking people. Um, but really it's just telling my testimony, uh, this idea that um, I'm messed up and so is everybody else, but some, we don't slow down enough to think about it that way. And so it's this idea of like, I'm messed up. God loved me through my mess. And as a result of him loving me, um, I have access to him in a way that I, I didn't have before. And my life is different. And people can feel that. They can see that my life is different just because I, I understand who Jesus is to me differently. Um, and I, I think sharing my faith is I, I, what I, it's really simple to me now, uh, like just the idea of just telling my story is, is it's an invitation for someone to lean in and say, man, I, I'm messed up or I, I've never thought about that with my life before. And, or that was brave that you shared your story. And I was like, I, it's just, I'm just telling you what Jesus did for me. So the reason it's important is because, um, I, for a long time I was faking, right? Like I was faking my journey with Jesus and, and um, I don't want that for other people like that. There's, you don't have to fake. Um, you could, you could be broken and messed up and Jesus will still want to hug you despite that. And that for me felt like that was a game changer for me. That that's something that I want to share with people um, because it, it was such an important realization and it's so simply who Jesus is and why he's, why he's awesome and, and why it makes sense to share. Uh, my faith. Lillian, I don't know about you. I don't know if you've ever messed up before, but I have. There's mm. times in my life yes. <laughs> that I feel like I've screwed this thing up so bad, just like Paul was saying. But you know what? I agree with Paul. God will not let us fail. That's right. You know, even if we go out and we do kind of quote mess something up, we're told in the spirit of prophecy that the angels will convert our words and give us a positive testimony. People will hear exactly what they need to hear. So please reach out, reach out and tell your story. Mm, amen. And it's just telling what Jesus has done for you. I like when he said that. So, well, the next one, I wanna read a quote for the next video to, before we look at it, and it's a, Amanda's video. I love just hearing the story of new people when they come to the Lord and how the Lord immediately uses them. Do you remember when you first came to the Lord mm -hmm. and how you had that passion in your heart that you just had to tell someone well, about just, what God has done in your life? Just like Amanda, she needed a Leah. I needed an individual in my life to, to mm -hmm. point me in the right direction. So I want to praise God for Leah being there for mm -hmm. Amanda. Amen. And before we listen to Amanda's story, I want to read this from Steps to Christ. It's one of my favorite quotes. It says, no sooner does one come to Christ than there is born in his mm -hmm. heart a desire to make known to others what a precious friend he has found in Jesus. The saving and sanctifying truth cannot be shut up in his heart. Isn't that great? It can't be shut up in his heart. That's right. That's what has to happen inside of us. It has mm -hmm. to well up so much that it overflows. All right, so let's listen to her story. Yeah. So Amanda and I met um, a little over a year ago. I had just moved into an apartment in Media, Pennsylvania after um, accepting a call to plan to church in the southeastern area of Pennsylvania near Philadelphia. And 
um, it was a Thursday morning when we met. What was neat to me is Wednesday night, I had just prayed that God would send me someone that I could be friends with and share Jesus with and give Bible studies to. Um, and so we just chatted a little bit and she asked what I did, why I had just moved into the area. And when I told her what I did for work, she was like, oh, that's great. I love Jesus too. So that was my opportunity to offer her Bible studies. And she said, yes. And we started Bible studies that Sunday. But little did I know, I was actually answering a prayer, or God was answering a prayer that Amanda had prayed years before. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that, Amanda? Sure. So um, I was on a journey before I had met you. Um, I was searching for the truth. I had always believed in God. I had always loved God. Um, unfortunately, I had just a lot of bad things happen in my life. Um, but long story short, I had prayed and I had written in a journal that I had that I had really wanted to be involved in Bible studies. Um, I was going into the word of God, but I was on my own and I was just having a difficult time um, understanding things, um, just finding my way around the Bible. Um, I was reading different spiritual books um, from different authors. Um, so when I met you, it, I don't know, it, just, it was a divine appointment and it was a blessing and I, I, my whole life has been different since. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You still have that beautiful glow you did on your baptism. Tell us all about um, what God did that was so exciting of those that came to your baptism that you weren't sure would come. Oh, yeah. So my parents came to my baptism um, and I didn't know how that was going to go. I've had a difficult relationship with my parents, unfortunately, over the years, um, especially with my mom. Um, so. Yeah, I just, it, it was just hard, um, but they showed up and then my mom actually talked to one of the other church members and said um, how beautiful the day was um, and how much it had touched her heart. The following Sabbath, one of the church, the church member that she had spoke to um, had mentioned, you know, had I spoken to my mom since the baptism and I had said no. Um, and she was going to reach out to my mom, but I just felt the Holy Spirit just, it was like, I have to be the one to reach out to my mom. Um, and so I did, and I did a follow up with my mom and that led into me doing a Bible study with her. Um, so it was just like, so amazing. Um, yeah, I just want to share. I want to share my faith. I want to share the truth. Um, I want other people to to um, have a relationship with the Lord because there is nothing greater than having a relationship with the Lord. It's there, it's so much joy and so much love and we still have our struggles and, you know, difficult times come and bad things happen. But, um, and it has even since I, I met you, um, but it's just, it's just so amazing. Um, to be in a relationship with God. And um, I just want everybody else to know that, experience that. Um, so, yeah. Any closing thoughts you want to share with those who maybe they're like, I don't know all the answers or I'm afraid to give a Bible study or any closing advice or thoughts you want to share with those who will watch this? Um, I would say just do it. Um, because I'm nervous. I have such bad anxiety. I doubt myself all the time. Um, I question every little thing I say, every little thing I do. Um, I just encourage everyone to just, to just share. Um, yeah, because it's just, it, 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 it's such a gift that we have. Um, and it's, it's just share. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Amanda, for taking the time to share what God has done in your life. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> Amen. Isn't that exciting? Amen. Oh, you know, two things stand out um, about Amanda's story, and that is number one that even though immediately she felt that responsibility in her heart to reach out to her mom right. and be the one to witness to she her mom. She didn't want somebody else to take her responsibility. I mean, isn't that amazing? I mean, the rocks will cry out, but she wanted to do it. And that's how we should all feel. It's our responsibility to reach our family, our neighbors, our co-workers. Right. And, um, and, and the fact that she said she was nervous. It's okay. She just got baptized. That's right. I, I don't I don't remember in the story, do you, that she went to a trainee, she did anything. She just shared her experience and she started to share what she knows. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that and I just know that God is gonna use Amanda in a mighty way. In a mighty way. I'd like to read this one, Lily, in the Christian service, page thirty. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an army of you today who can mu uh, do much if they are properly directed and encouraged. We want our children to believe the truth. We want them to be blessed of God. We want them to act a part and well-organized mm. plan for helping other youth. We just saw two youth, but we're gonna see a couple more youth in just a moment. And I was really impressed mm -hmm. on what this youth group is doing. Amen, let's look at that. I'm here with Bryant and Peyton, two friends of mine. Bryant, let me ask you a question. During COVID-19, those months of isolation, how did it affect your personal life with God? I think the biggest thing uh, that just kind of kept me going or, or kept me at ease was knowing that, that God was with me. But the hardest part about it all was just missing fellowship with um, people in the group and, and people I'd see on a daily or weekly basis, not seeing people at church and not getting to come to class and just kind of struggling with, with missing the fellowship that I had had for so long before everything happened. So fellowship's really important to you. How does the fellowship you have with your youth group help you grow right now? Yeah, I think fellowship is just so important because we all we all have different um, journeys and paths that we take to get to where we are now. And so I think the fellowship that we have gives us all uh, very different perspectives and helps everyone see things um, and shine lights on things that we wouldn't normally see by just ourselves because we kind of have that one-track mindset. So seeing different perspectives from people who have been raised in the church, who haven't been raised in the church, and come from different backgrounds just really shines light on everything God wants us to see. You, and you grow from that. That's yeah, awesome. Definitely. Awesome. Peyton, you, you have a different experience with COVID-19. What changed for you during that? Did anything change for you? Well, to be honest, uh, about a month before COVID started, I had stopped coming to church because my relationship with God just was not where it was supposed to be at. And so all throughout this whole COVID thing, really, nothing really changed for me much. But I will say that when we finally came back to church, that I was really excited to come back and spend time in fellowship with friends. And uh, about two months ago, I was on the phone with my best friend, Othello, and we were just talking some just came over me and said, let's start a Bible study. So about a month and a half ago, me and my friend Brian here, we started co-leading a young men's Bible study group on Friday evenings at 7.30. And just, I mean, when you open your life to what the Lord can do, you just never know what can happen. I'm hearing you guys do fun stuff, you guys do Bible studies. What is your plans next for this young group of people? What do you guys have, what is the goal? We see you getting involved with your youth group, what's your goal for the church? I think as a whole, it's just realizing that we are the generation that is now coming into authority in the church. We're starting to gain position. We're starting to lead in the church and have an influence um, as young people and as adults growing up. Um, and, you know, we can start family soon and, and so forth. So I believe that coming now, being young men and coming into this like position, um, we had talked about before starting Bible study, just just owning up to the position that God has placed us in and really um, maturing and, and leading out and just making sure that as a young group, as a young people, we can just fulfill God's mission for us. I'm here with my friend Alex. Alex is new to our youth group here at the Waynesboro Seventh-day Adventist Church. Alex, what has been your experience with our youth group here? Well, for about the past six weeks, I've been coming as a visitor and now I believe I have integrated into the group as a, a family member now. Oh, yeah. And uh, the first time I came was July 4th, and I was 
included in conversation uh, despite my worldly appearance and it was just a very loving atmosphere overall. A loving atmosphere. You talk about your worldly appearance. How has your life changed? Well, uh, I come from a rough upbringing and rough background. I was actually recently released from the Michigan Department of Corrections and uh, the people here actually did not have a problem with any of that though. It's just, it's been all about Jesus. All about Jesus. How have you seen Jesus more in your life with these young people? The young people here have befriended me in ways that I have never had friendship happen uh, in my life. Awesome. As you can see, our young people are on fire right now for the Lord. It wouldn't be possible though without the support of their church. Are you young people, you're ready to make a difference in your church. I encourage you to start today. Well, I really appreciate Tony and the Waynesboro Church, mm -hmm. but the, the thing that really stands out to me is most of our churches would love to have young people. Mm -hmm. We know that young people are very Amen. important, but what stands out to me is that this church provided not only the opportunity, but they're supporting their group. And Tony's words, start today, means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Because every beginning has a starting point. That's right. We need to have more starting points, more beginnings for young people to have opportunity not only to take leadership, but to be totally involved mm -hmm. in our churches. Amen. And which leads us, Tim, to our, our last video today. Have you been blessed? I know I have. Amen. Amen. Uh, and this one is, is probably one of my favorite ones because it really shows how God creates these divine appointments, mm -hmm. <laughs> how God leads people into our path. And if that, if we're watching, um, we'll see more opportunities all around us. So I want you to hear Scott's story of how God created this uh, divine appointment. The other day, Heather and I and our two girls were walking around the church property at the Hanover Church. And it was a Sabbath afternoon, it was beautiful. We were trying to get some fresh air. And as we're walking, we get to the edge of the lawn where the two roads come together at an intersection there uh, just off the church property. And we noticed that there was a guy who actually pulled over onto the shoulder of the road and he got out of his car, walks to the shoulder of the road and he picks up something in his hands. We weren't sure exactly what he was doing, but he ends up walking across the lawn over to us and he hands us this small bird, this goldfinch. Um, he told us this bird had been hit by a car in front of them and he had two little kids in the back seat and his wife was with him and he said they were kind of distraught about the bird and what would happen to it and they were praying for it that it would get better and so he gave the bird to us and said would you guys just take care of this bird and uh, say a prayer for it and we told him absolutely and we told him to have a wonderful day god bless you and we took this little goldfinch that was clearly um, stunned or injured and we set her down in the grass and we're all kind of crowding around this bird as he gets in his car and he leaves. We're just kind of watching it and um, my girls decided to have their own little prayer for the bird that it would uh, be okay. And it was very clearly um, injured just from that impact of the car in front of it. About a minute later, we see him go down the road and do a U-turn and come back into the church parking lot. And he uh, got out with his wife and his little daughter, three years old and his son who's six years old. And he said, listen, my kids were just really wanting to see how this bird was gonna do because they had prayed for this bird to get better and they just wanted to see how it was doing and they didn't want me to leave. So they ended up walking over and we just were all talking about this little poor innocent bird that was sitting there in the grass. And as the conversation progressed, it progressed into, you know, where are you from? Why are you here? We were uh, talking to them about my music ministry and how um, things have changed, of course, in recent history with how my music ministry is, is going and um, the evangelistic series that the church had been doing. And he talked to us about uh, some of the struggles they've had with their own church and congregation and how they felt God calling them out of that and into um, a ministry themselves and into a new church. And they're just searching, they're trying to find a Bible-based church and want to uh, see God take them to the next level spiritually. So he and his wife um, just got into this wonderful deep conversation with us lasted about 20, 30 minutes. Um, all at once, without any you know, warning, this little bird just gets up and flies off, does a flyby, and then keeps going off into the sunset. And all the kids were clapping and excited, and it was kind of a faith-building experience for them because they just had prayed, and they saw their prayers answered. 
Um, and so at that point, we decided to go back behind the church where the church playground jungle gym was so the kids could play together and continue our conversation. And Heather and Lindsay and myself and Anthony, we decided just to continue our conversation that we had started in the parking lot. And that conversation that started at six o'clock in the evening in the parking lot went until 9.30 that night um, in the uh, church park as we just unfolded how God has been just touching our hearts with a desire to be in ministry, how he has been uh, leading us, even though things are very uncertain right now. And uh, we were actually at one point kind of in tears just discussing how amazing it was that God brought us all together at this intersection at this moment using a bird, an injured bird, to, to help us make this connection. And it's a connection only the Holy Spirit can really orchestrate. And that's true, and I think we all realize that. And we were able to lift each other up, and they decided to come to an outdoor concert that I'll be giving um, later on this month. And they want to connect with us more because we think that maybe God has plans for us together in our spiritual journeys. And so we've stayed in touch with Anthony and Lindsay. They're a couple that are our age, they're in their 30s. Of course, they have young kids just like we do. And um, one of the things that they had said to us was, it was a real blessing to see their kids connecting with other little kids um, the way they did with our daughters. And so God didn't just bless us as adults with that experience, he was blessing our kids too simultaneously, not only with their faith building experience, answering their prayer for this bird, but also just blessing them with being able to interact with each other for Christian little children, um, just loving on each other, playing on the slide, having a good time. So it's interesting to me to see how God can create these connections. He can create these divine appointments out of nothing. I mean, a, literally a Sabbath afternoon walk in a church parking lot, a little bird that gets hit by a car in front of you. And the next thing you know, you have a friendship that's instantly forged, instantly bonded over Christ, over God, over his plans, over his um, love for you. And so uh, my, my desire is to see them continue in their journey, in their spiritual walk. And I'm hoping that we'll be there for the ride and we'll be along um, with them in their journey, holding their hand, and that they can be an inspiration to us too as God leads them um, into a new Bible-believing faith. Well, once again, we've seen divine appointments. Mm -hmm. Jesus is just waiting to give us an opportunity. All we have to do is cooperate. I'm so thankful they were intentional. Amen. And that I, I just love the, how God just used a little bird, you know, and yeah. that they were conscious and they were present so that God can use them to be able to reach this family. So not only does he watch the birds of the field, he even uses them. Exactly. Well, as we end this special Sabbath school segment, Faith in Action, I hope you were blessed. And I just yeah. wanna thank God for how the Holy Spirit is being poured out, especially now in these difficult times and how our members are just engaging. And I just wanna thank each person that shared their story. We appreciate you sharing and, and for, for just encouraging everyone to continue to believe, have faith, and know that it's by my spirit, as the Bible says. So today, we have to be very intentional in what we're doing. You see, today we're, we're gathered here to be inspired, mm -hmm. but we're gathered here to pray, and we're gathered here to ask corporately as an entire conference united mm -hmm. together for an initiative. But we're not here to just pray for an initiative. We're here to be changed. Amen. We're here to be used by God and to be used in order to not only change our church's lives, but we're to reach out in the community so that our churches will not grow so that they're fuller, but so that people will be in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So I wanna ask you the question here this morning, how can you be more involved? Well, number one, stay for the entire process. Just leave just for the moment you need to refresh or whatever, but come back, be involved, join with the groups in prayer, listen to the sermons, participate, and most of all, as we look at the words, by my spirit, remember that it's not by our abilities, but it's by the spirit of God as he moves upon our hearts. As we listen to that still small voice, please let God change your life and be a part of the mighty movement of reaching everyone everywhere. Amen. God bless you all as we continue our day together. God bless you too.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. It is beautiful outside, so I hope that you're able to get outside and get some fresh air and sunshine today. I did this morning, and I was able to get in my walk, a really good one, and I do feel great. So I hope you're able to get outside and enjoy the beautiful nature that God has created for us. I am here today, though. I wanted to invite you to a presentation that we're having on August 30th at 1.30. It's called Made to Move. Now, I'm sure that you may know exactly what that means. But if for some reason you don't, Made to Move is specifically about exercise. God has made us to move. He desires for us to get up and to exercise, to go out, get fresh air and sunshine. And some of the best ways that we can do that are through gardening. Um, check out the, the church garden. Also through walking. One of the simplest things that we can do, it is a blessing for us just to get up and go walking. Well, during this presentation, we are going to talk about what the Bible says about exercise. We're also going to share, of course, the benefits of exercise. And we're going to share, among many other things, some tips and tricks for you. One of the other things that we're also going to do on, on, on August 30th at 1.30 is coach you successful. We're going to give you some coaching tips um, and work with you on how you can put um, exercise back into your life. Um, and so if you, if you stop for some reason, we're going to help you get restarted. And if you want to start, we're going to give you suggestions for how to do that. So again, join us August 30th at 1.30 p.m. The link will be sent out to you. Please share it with your friends and your family. And most important, please pray for myself and the other presenter, which is Dr. Lisa Arosarina. She's going to be doing the presentation with me. Please pray for us because we just want to magnify Christ because if he is lifted up, then all will be drawn closer to him. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Bye-bye. Good morning and happy Sabbath. What a beautiful day to worship God. I am so excited about what we are doing today across Pennsylvania Conference. We have eight strategic initiatives in our conference, and the very first one is called By My Spirit, because we realize we can't do anything to God's glory without His Holy Spirit. And we've been praying. We've been praying in our conference for several years now, and we have seen God work in amazing ways. And yet we need more prayer and more power. The challenges in front of us in this time are great, but the opportunities are equally great. People are looking for answers right now. They are looking for God. They're looking for peace. And as we pray, I believe God will fill us with his spirit and he'll do marvelous things way above what we can even think or imagine. So thank you for joining us today. Our churches all across Pennsylvania Conference, maybe you're uh, joining us from your home. But thank you for taking the time and prioritizing this time to worship God and to pray with us that God will send His Holy Spirit. I know we're in for many blessings today from the special music, from the preaching of Pastor Derek Morris, and the other components that we're going to have today. So let's be in prayer that God's Spirit will be poured out today. Well, at this time, Elder Sean Shives, my assistant, as well as pastor of our Hampton, Reading Hampton Heights Church, will bring to us our scripture reading. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Thank you, Elder Gibbs. Uh, thank you for introducing me. Uh, I am privileged to be here today. I am uh, about to share a wonderful verse to you from the book of Zechariah, chapter 4. The, uh, the angel says to Zechariah, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, but Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And that's what today is about. It's about praying back God's word to him. We're looking for 3,000 prayer partners in our conference because we have these eight initiatives, wonderful initiatives to, to take our message to, to the world and also to empower our people to be even greater participants in this. So we're going to ask God today uh, and claim his word today that it's by his power that this is going to be accomplished. So may God bless you as we continue in worship today. Good morning. I want to welcome you to one of our schools on this Sabbath morning. 
And yes, during this COVID time, what do we think about? We think about masks. We think about safety. It's just us together. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. And I want to let you know that in our schools, we are concerned about our student safety, as is evident by the masks you'll see kids wearing, the hand sanitizers that will be present, the cleaning materials we've purchased, and the, the new equipment that is here to be able to provide uh, not isolation, but togetherness in a safe manner. We are trying to do everything we can to keep our kids safe. But we want to do more than that. We want to look to the future. We want to look past COVID-19 and look to a future where we can say, what can we do that nobody else is able to do? What quality can we bring that nobody else can bring? And to that end, I am proud to announce that we have some amazing things happening in this conference. You'll see behind me that this school has a Promethean board. Elsewhere they have ThinkPads and other technology that will allow them to be in a distant uh, digital world that will allow us to minister to students in so many more ways. Throughout the conference, we have built a distance learning platform, a digital-based distance learning platform that will allow us to, yes, provide education for our students if we can't be together, but it will also allow us to give education to students who maybe are not able to be in our schools because of geographic location or, or other needs. It will also allow us to really leverage our entire system conference-wide, division-wide, even worldwide. Just think of it. Think of your student who maybe needs to learn Spanish, being able to speak on a regular occasion with someone in, in a country where Spanish is the native language. These are exciting times. Think about our schools being able to have uh, guest lecturers and guest speakers who are specialists in their fields from far, far away being able to join us. These types of things are what we want to be able to bring into our classroom. A level of excellence, a level of greatness for our students that will make Jesus proud and also more effectively bring the gospel into the lives of our young people. And this is where we need you. This is not an easy task. We cover your support. The enemy will work against this, so we covet your prayers. And these things are not cheap. So we covet your partnership and the offerings that we have uh, on a routine basis here in the conference. This morning, if you are passionate about quality education for our young people, both inside the walls of our schools and outside, would you consider partnering with us and giving to the offering this morning? Those offerings make a difference for our schools. It makes a difference for our students. Often, we think of the young people who are able to be in our buildings as a result of this offering. And that will still be true, but it also may make a difference as we purchase technology and safety equipment to provide not only an in-present education, but a safe education. And not only a safe education in the present and in the building, but also a quality education for those who may not be able to be in the building. This morning, please prayerfully consider how you can support us as we seek to bring an education that will make Jesus proud and bring excellence to our students. And so today our offering is for Worthy Student Fund. And the Worthy Student Fund goes to help those young people who otherwise could not attend our schools and get this extremely important spiritual foundation at this very impressionable time of their lives. May God bless you as you give by His Spirit to help these young people. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are raising up young people to carry on your work if your son Jesus does not come soon. And we believe he is. And at the same time, during that time, these young people will play an important role in witnessing and bringing others into your last day remnant church into a knowledge of the truth that they may be saved. And we pray, Lord, your blessing upon this offering. Who knows what difference it will make in a young person's life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you, all the Pearson, for the offering appeal this morning. And this morning, I would like to ask you to join me in a pray. Let's pray together. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you, Lord, to thank you for all the blessings and the love that you have been having for us. And Lord, at this morning, we want to worship you because you are God. And we're going to ask you, Lord, that you can send us a double portion of your Holy Spirit. We are sure, Lord, that you're going to use Dr. Morris this morning to, for the message that you have for us. We ask you, Lord, that you can uh, open our hearts and receive the message that you have for us in this morning. Lord, we ask you as well for all the churches and church members in Pennsylvania Conference, our schools, our pastors, and all the people that is waiting to hear about you. Use us, Lord, in this mission that we have in Pennsylvania Conference. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, uh, thank you for being with us this, this morning. And uh, I would like to introduce to you uh, a wonderful couple. To uh, Pastor Todd Casey and his wife, they're going to bless us with a special music this morning. But Pastor Todd Casey is not just gifted with singing. He also is our youth director in the Pennsylvania Conference. As a conference, we have been praying a lot that God can send us the right person to support the youth ministries. And we are sure that the pastor Todd Casey and his wife are going to be a bless for all the youth department, pathfinders, adventures. So you will see them very soon in your churches and the programs with the youth department. And may God bless them and, and this special music. Also, uh, we're going to be blessed today with a message by Dr. Morris. We're going to thank Dr. Morris to be part of this special program in the Pennsylvania Conference. And we are pretty sure that God is going to use him this morning for the message. God bless you all. I 
was with you yesterday when you didn't turn away from the beggar with his hands held out in shame and if you got the time to spend i know we make the best of friends by the way the holy spirit is my It is a great privilege to be with you today for the Pennsylvania Conference Convocation by my spirit. We are going to be blessed as we study the Word of God together. I just want to say that the Pennsylvania Conference and the people of the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania have a special place in my heart. It was in this conference that I began my ministry many years ago at the Kenhorst Seventh-day Adventist Church in Reading, Pennsylvania. Here in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, our two sons were born, and when I was 29 years old, I had the privilege of being ordained at the Pennsylvania camp meeting by Pastor George Vanderman, whose father was also a pastor at one time in this great conference. It's my prayer that as we consider the Word of God together today, that we would be blessed in profound ways and that we would be able to go by the Spirit of God to reach everyone, everywhere, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Before we begin our study today, which I've entitled, Harvest Work by the Power of the Holy Spirit, I want to invite you to pray with me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this special convocation where we can come together across the great state of Pennsylvania, seeking a word from you that will equip us, reaching everyone everywhere with the life-changing message of a God who loves us with an immeasurable and unfailing love, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would be with us as we worship together during this convocation. And I thank you for hearing our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we have a mission to accomplish here in the Pennsylvania Conference and around the world. What is that mission that God has given us to do? What are we supposed to be doing while we wait for his glorious return? Well, the Bible gives us the answer. In fact, in the words of Jesus in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, we find our God-given mission. Jesus says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to 
every creature. You say, Pastor Derek, that's a, that's a massive challenge, reaching everyone everywhere. And Jesus is coming soon. And you're absolutely right. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 28 that that commission is not just telling people about the gospel, but notice making disciples. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What an amazing mission has been given to us. And Jesus tells us that as we go, we have a special work to do. Recorded in Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 8, Jesus gives these instructions to his followers. Matthew chapter 10, beginning with verse 7. As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. You know, as I listen to the words of Jesus, I think to myself, this is an impossible task if we're trying to accomplish our God-given mission in our own strength. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to equip us. You know, many years before Jesus walked on the earth and gave that commission, he gave a word through the prophet Zechariah. It's recorded in Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Zerubbabel also had a huge challenge in the 6th century B.C., going back to the land where they had been taken from in exile to try to re-accomplish God's mission there. And the word that the Lord gave through the prophet Zechariah was this, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. In other words, to Zerubbabel many years ago, but also to us today, seeking to reach everyone everywhere. We cannot accomplish the mission in our own wisdom and strength. It is not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. We can only accomplish our God-given mission by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, as I read the Gospels, I see that Jesus accomplished his mission by the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was baptized, Matthew records in Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, I'm reading verse 16, that when he was baptized, Jesus immediately came up from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. At the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, it's not that the Holy Spirit wasn't with him his whole life. He was filled with the Holy Spirit even in his mother's womb. But as he begins his mission now as Messiah, the Holy Spirit rests upon him. As we continue to read, we discover that as Jesus goes to begin his mission, Luke tells us in Luke chapter 4 and verse 1, Luke 4 and verse 1, then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We know that there Jesus would be tempted by the enemy. But I want you to notice he's entering into his ministry. He's fulfilling his God-given mission, and he's doing so in the power of the Holy Spirit. We read on in Luke chapter 4 and verse 14, after that great challenge in the wilderness, 
then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. If we're gaining a lesson from the life of Jesus, we would say it's not by might or by power, but by the Spirit of God that the mission will be accomplished. You know, I'm excited today as we think about reaching everyone everywhere, that we have the theme, by my Spirit, because it's only by the Spirit of God that the mission will be accomplished. When Jesus was in the synagogue in Nazareth, he quoted from a prophecy about Messiah written 700 years earlier. It's recorded in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Jesus reading from the Isaiah scroll says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. My friends, that's the secret. Jesus accomplished his mission by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if there's a lesson for us today, it would be that we must also accomplish our God-given mission by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful that the prophecy given through Zechariah to Zerubbabel is also a word from the Lord to us today. Not by might, nor by power. In other words, not by your might or your power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. That is not only direction, it's also a promise that the mission can be accomplished, reaching everyone everywhere by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a beautiful promise that Jesus gave in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. He was just about to ascend to heaven, but this promise was so important for each one of his followers back then and also for us. Jesus said, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That's a reminder, but it's also a promise, isn't it? Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. As Jesus sent out his disciples on that God-given mission, and as he sends us out today, he gives some important instructions to harvest workers. And those instructions I want to focus on with you as we continue our study today. They're found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10 and verse 2. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. Jesus to his harvest workers who will not be able to accomplish the mission in their own might or power but by the Spirit of God, he says to them, Luke 10 and verse 2, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. I want you to notice as Jesus begins his instruction that he gives us an important insight the harvest truly is great. Jesus is telling us that there are men and women we might apply to today across the great commonwealth of Pennsylvania just waiting for an invitation to become part of his eternal kingdom. Sometimes when we go into the harvest work, it's obvious to us as it was on the day of Pentecost. Other times it may not be so obvious we may, we may see apparently just a small harvest, but I want to assure you today that when we go forward in our God-given mission in the power of the Holy Spirit, we will see the word of Jesus fulfilled. The harvest truly is great. I had the privilege of conducting some meetings in Allentown, Pennsylvania when I was a pastor there. And it wasn't like Pentecost where 3,000 were converted in one day. In fact, there was just a small number of people who came to the meetings. But when we see 
just a small group, we still have to remember what Jesus said. The harvest truly is great. There was one couple. They came to all of the meetings. Uh, Gary and Lori, their names were, and they sat on the third row, and I, I would notice how attentive they were to the Word of God. You can tell, leaning forward, following in their Bible, a facial expression as the Word is shared, and I thought to myself, well, maybe there won't be a lot of people, but, but maybe a small harvest. Oh, God, help us to see as you do. When we go forward in the power of the Holy Spirit, there will always be a great harvest. Well, as we came to the end of the meetings, I decided that I should go and visit Gary and Lori there at their home in, Pencil in Allentown, Pennsylvania. But as I went there and shared with them how happy I was that they'd been coming to the meetings, Gary said, well, Pastor, thank you. We've really enjoyed the meetings, but, but we're really not convicted that we should be baptized and become part of God's last day movement. Well, friend, I didn't know what to do. I thought, now what shall we do? God, is there going to be any harvest? Oh, my friend, there will always be a harvest, and it will always be a great harvest when we go in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God impressed me to begin to pray earnestly for Gary and Lori. That was a Thursday. As I prayed for them and said, God, this is your harvest. It's not our harvest. And you've said that the harvest truly is great. Well, Gary worked the night shift at a company in Philadelphia. He worked Thursday night, and on Friday morning as he was driving home on the northeast extension of the Pennsylvania Turnpike, Gary came under the overwhelming conviction of the Holy Spirit that he should be baptized and become a member of God's last day remnant movement. But he thought to himself, how am I going to tell my wife? What Gary had not yet realized is that Jesus said, it's good if I go away because I will send another comforter who will be with you and in you. You see, the Holy Spirit was not only speaking to Gary on the northeast extension of the Pennsylvania Turnpike, but the Holy Spirit was also visiting a home in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And Gary's wife, Lori, came under the overwhelming conviction of the Holy Spirit that she should be baptized and become a part of God's last day movement, preparing for the soon coming of Jesus. But she also wondered, how am I going to tell my husband? Oh, what a joyful celebration there was when Gary and Lori were united as he arrived home and shared their stories and their mutual conviction that they should be baptized and become a part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. My friend, when we do harvest work in the power of the Holy Spirit, we see miracles happen. You say to me, Pastor Derek, that's wonderful. Uh, were Gary and Lori baptized? I say, yes, they were. It was a joyful day. In fact, when they were baptized, Gary turned to me and he said, Pastor Derek, can I speak to the church? I thought, I've never been asked that before in a baptistry for someone to speak to the church. But I said, yes, Gary. And he spoke a few words of admonition and encouragement to the people gathered that day. And as he spoke, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, that young man is going to be a preacher. God would take someone from a factory and make them a preacher of righteousness. Well, that promise was fulfilled. Some of you know Gary Moyer and how God has blessed his ministry. He is now the vice president of the Carolina Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Thousands have heard the gospel message as a result of his ministry. And I just want to say, praise God, that when we go in the power of the Holy Spirit, the harvest is always great. But Jesus said, even though the harvest is great, I'm back in Luke chapter 10 and verse 2, the laborers are few. If we are going to reach everyone everywhere, we know it's not by our might and power, but by the Spirit of God. We know that. B but it's going to take more than one or two people. We need to be united together in the mission. 
I heard you wanted to hold 120 evangelistic meetings in 2020. That was interrupted because of this global health pandemic, but, but you're planning to do that next year. Maybe it should be 121 in 2021. Maybe someone watching this message will say, I want to join the Lord of the harvest in his harvest work. There's so many laborers who are distracted, the laborers of few, and the Spirit of God may be calling you today, just as he called Gary from his work there in Philadelphia to become a preacher of righteousness. I think of another young man, Nathan, who was working at a foundry and was a martial arts instructor in Mukunji, who God called, and today Nathan Krauss also is a leader in God's church, a vice president in the Texas conference. You see, God is calling workers. Maybe he's calling you today to join him in his harvest work. But Jesus says, because the harvest is great, but the laborers are few, there's something we need to do as harvest workers called to go out by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look with me again in Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. Jesus says, because the harvest is great, but the laborers are few, pray, therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. I want to focus on that one word, pray. In the Greek, it's the verb deomai. It means to beg or to cry out. It's praying not just little prayers. We'll talk this afternoon about praying bold prayers by the power of the Holy Spirit. But, but certainly this prayer is not just a casual prayer, crying out to God, begging God, not because we're trying to change God's heart. It's our hearts that need to be transformed so that we can go out in the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray the Lord of the harvest, cry out to him. You say, Pastor Derek, I don't know how to pray like that. Well, I have to confess to you that I need to learn to pray the way that Jesus wants me to pray. But there's an encouraging word for both of us in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Let's look at that verse together. Romans 8 and verse 26. If we want to pray the way Jesus wants us to pray, the Bible says, The Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. Someone ought to say amen. (laughs) Or use my favorite Hebrew word, hallelujah. You see, when Jesus calls us to cry out to the Lord of the harvest, because the harvest is great, but the laborers are few, and we're called to go out as harvest workers in the power of the Holy Spirit, The Holy Spirit will help us even in our praying. My friend, that's really good news, isn't it? No wonder the Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Ephesians 6 and verse 18. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Yes, my friend, as we cry out to the Lord, harvest workers called to go out in the power of the Spirit, The Spirit will help us in our praying. But Jesus tells us what we should pray, crying out, again, not to change God's heart, but to change our hearts back in Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. For harvest workers called to reach everyone everywhere, not by might or by power, but by His Spirit. Jesus says, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. It's not going to be by might or power, but by his spirit that we will go. It says he's going to send out laborers into his harvest. Now that verb to send out is is not the common verb apostello from which we get the English word apostle to send out. It's the word ekbalo. It literally means to throw out, pray to the Lord of the harvest to throw out, throw out laborers into his harvest. You see, Pastor Derek, I don't know, that sounds uh, dangerous. But you see, the harvest is great. And we're called to reach everyone everywhere by 
my spirit, Jesus says. And so we, we basically what we're doing is we're giving the Lord of the harvest permission. We're saying, Lord of the harvest, I earnestly beg you to throw out laborers into your harvest and you have my permission to begin with me. When you pray that radical prayer, my friend, following the example of Jesus, the Lord of the harvest will throw you out exactly when and where he knows you will be most effective in his harvest work. I say that's really good news. He knows where you'll be able to connect with people, even in the great state of Pennsylvania. But we're reaching everyone everywhere. He may send you somewhere else, but remember the mission begins at home. Jerusalem, then Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. When we pray that radical prayer, we give the Lord of the harvest permission to put us exactly where he wants us to be, where he knows we will be most effective in his work. You see, Pastor Derek, you said when we do that, we're following the example of Jesus. What do you mean by that? Well, we discover that Jesus prayed this radical prayer. Look in Mark chapter 1 and verse 12. Jesus at the beginning of his ministry, we know Jesus did his ministry by the power of the Holy Spirit. And at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus prays this prayer because the harvest is great, but the labors are few. He prays for the Lord of the harvest to throw him out into the harvest work. Notice what it says in Mark 1 and verse 12. Immediately, the Spirit drove him, that's Jesus, into the wilderness. Now that's unusual language, isn't it? He drove him. What does that mean? Well, it's actually the verb ekbalo that we find in Luke 10 and verse 2. Literally, the Spirit threw him out into the wilderness, actually threw him out into his ministry. First would come this satanic challenge, and then filled with the Spirit of God, he would go into Galilee. Filled with the Spirit of God, he would perform many miracles and proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. Filled with the Spirit of God, he would say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Jesus set an example for us. If we are to reach everyone everywhere, we know it will not be by our might or power, but by the Spirit of God, united together. But we are following the example of Jesus. Jesus demonstrated in his ministry that miracles happen when we go forward by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he calls us to pray the same prayer. Lord of the harvest, I earnestly beg you to throw out laborers into your harvest. And you have my permission to begin with me. Jesus prayed this radical prayer and he invites you, he invites me to pray the same radical prayer today. My friends, I believe that this coming year is going to be a year of miracles in the Pennsylvania Conference. Why? Because men and women, boys and girls, are going to have the courage to say, I want to join the Lord in His harvest work by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to follow the example of Jesus and give the Lord of the harvest permission to throw me out exactly where He knows I will be most effective in His work. Can you remember that simple prayer? Perhaps you want to just pray it with me in your mind right now. Lord of the harvest, I earnestly beg you to throw out laborers into your harvest and you have my permission to begin with me. We have a mission to accomplish here in the Pennsylvania Conference and around the world, reaching everyone, everywhere. And we know it's an impossible task if we're trying to accomplish it, that God-given mission in our own wisdom and strength. Our God-given mission, my friends, can only be accomplished by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm always excited when I see men and women 
who are willing to respond to that invitation. Some years ago, a, a man came up to me and he said, do you remember me? <laughs> you know, when people say that, I've, I don't know what to say. If I say yes, uh, I may not be completely honest, but I vaguely recognize your face. He said, do you remember me? I said, I vaguely recognize your face, but tell me your story. He said, well, I heard you share an invitation to join the Lord in his harvest work by the power of the Holy Spirit. I was working for the government at the time. But when you gave that invitation, he said, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, I want you to be a harvest worker going forward, not by might or power, but by the Spirit of God. He told me, Pastor Derek, as I, as I heard that call, something stirred within my soul. And I thought, I need to respond to that invitation because time is short. Jesus is coming soon. The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. I need to give the Lord of the harvest permission to throw me out into his harvest work because he knows exactly where I'll be most effective and efficient in his work. And so that man responded to that conviction of the Holy Spirit, and he came forward. He came forward to the front of the auditorium and made a commitment to be a harvest worker by the power of the Holy Spirit. But as he was coming forward, a thought came to his mind. He said, what about my wife? Maybe like Gary driving on the Pennsylvania Turnpike Northeast Extension. What about my wife? I'm making a commitment today to follow the Lord and become a harvest worker by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this gentleman, as he's walking forward to the front of the auditorium, thought, what about my wife? What will she say? I'm leaving a comfortable job with the government and I'm stepping out in faith. Well, I wanted to know what happened next. And he told me, he said, I turned and my wife was standing right by my side. Hallelujah. <laughs> when couples join together in the harvest work, I know there's rejoicing in heaven. I was blessed to talk to that couple. Today, they are a leading pastoral couple, evangelist couple in the conference where they're working. Willing to leave everything when the Lord of the harvest says, I've got a special work for you to do. Knowing that we can't do that work by our own power, but only by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Anointed by the Spirit, we go forward. Guided by the Spirit, we go forward. Empowered by the Spirit, we go forward. United together in mission, we go forward. Will you answer the call of Jesus? I remember kneeling down in a, in a parking area by a house in Allentown, Pennsylvania with a young man. He'd just given his heart to Jesus. And he was hearing the call of God to go into full-time harvest work. But he had no money to pay for his tuition. He didn't know how God was going to open the door. Sometimes we might say, well, God, um, I don't, I'd like to join you in your harvest work by the power of the Holy Spirit, but but I don't think it's possible for me. My friend, everything is possible when we surrender fully to God. This young man knelt with me on the driveway of a house and committed his heart to Jesus and, and to join Jesus in his harvest work. And do you know God provided for him? Two families in the church offered to sponsor him to go off to study theology. He graduated as the president of his graduating class. He has served faithfully as a pastor. I mentioned his name a little earlier, Nathan Krause. God called him from working in a foundry and teaching martial arts to become a powerful preacher of the gospel. Now, my friends, I'm not saying that God will call you to be a pastor like Nathan or Gary, I don't know what God's plan is. I know this. It will take us being united together, everyone, reaching everyone everywhere for Christ. 
it will take all of us. Some of us will be able to help financially in ways that others are not able. Some of us will be able to speak at evangelistic meetings. Others will help with logistics. Some of us have the gift of singing. Others of us, it would be best if we didn't sing, but we have other gifts. And as we ask the Lord of the harvest to throw us out into his harvest work, he will put us where we will be most effective for his kingdom. My friend, will you answer the call of Jesus? Will you be a harvest worker for Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit? I'm going to pray right now. I know you're in your homes. Some of you may be in small groups. But across the Pennsylvania Conference, this convocation is happening. Some of you may even be in churches, socially distanced. But I'm going to speak to you right now in Jesus' name. I'm going to appeal to you right now. If, if in your heart you say, Lord, I want to respond to the call of Jesus, reaching everyone everywhere by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I want to invite you to kneel down with me and make a commitment right now. Let's pray together. Lord God, we don't know all of what your plans are, but we know your plans are good plans. You promised us that. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a future and a hope. We're just wanting to say today that we're willing for you to use us as harvest workers by the power of your Holy Spirit. Throw us out into your harvest work, Lord, by the grace of God in this great conference of Pennsylvania, to the precious people of this commonwealth that they may know that there's a God who loves them and that Jesus is coming soon. And may many take their stand, ready to welcome Jesus with joy. Bless each commitment today, I pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
Hello, Fairview family. Happy Sabbath. I hope you're having a good, good Sabbath so far. I just want to invite you to next week, AY. It's going to be on the topic of bullying, cyberbullying, and what should we do as Christians to uh, respond to it. Brother Robin and Sister Alicia are going to be talking about this very important topic. And I just want to welcome you to join us and invite your friends, invite someone that you know that is suffering from this. Um, this topic, I believe, is so important even now in this uh, pandemic because we are all in our homes and we don't know what, you know, the kids are suffering. We don't know what, you know, people behind the screen will be telling um, other people. So we need to make sure that our Fairview family and our friends and our, our old loved ones are safe and secure from this um, really important issue. So I welcome you to join us. This will be um, next Sabbath at 5 p.m. Again, it will be next Sabbath at 5 p.m. So you are all welcome to join us. Happy Sabbath and have a good rest of the day. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. It is beautiful outside, so I hope that you're able to get outside and get some fresh air and sunshine today. I did this morning, and I was able to get in my walk, a really good one, and I do feel great. So I hope you're able to get outside and enjoy the beautiful nature that God has created for us. I am here today, though. I wanted to invite you to a presentation that we're having on August 30th at 1.30. It's called Made to Move. Now, I'm sure that you may know exactly what that means, but if for some reason you don't, Made to Move is specifically about exercise. God has made us to move. He desires for us to get up and to exercise, to go out, get fresh air and sunshine. And some of the best ways that we can do that are through gardening. Um, check out the, the church garden. Also through walking. One of the simplest things that we can do, it is a blessing for us just to get up and go walking. Well, during this presentation, we are going to talk about what the Bible says about exercise. We're also going to share, of course, the benefits of exercise. And we're going to share, among many other things, some tips and tricks for you. One of the other things that we're also going to do on, on, on August 30th at 1.30 is coach you successful. We're going to give you some coaching tips um, and work with you on how you can put um, exercise back into your life. Um, and so if you, if you stop for some reason, we're going to help you get restarted. And if you want to start, we're going to give you suggestions on how to do that. So again, join us August 30th at 1.30 p.m. The link will be sent out to you. Please share it with your friends and your family. And most important, please pray for myself and the other presenter, which is Dr. Lisa Arosarina. She's going to be doing a presentation with me. Please pray for us because... We just want to magnify Christ, because if he is lifted up, then all will be drawn closer to him. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Bye-bye.
Well, welcome back to our afternoon program and time together. I trust that you have been blessed as I was this morning. We are so blessed to be able to gather together around the conference like this and to pray together and to be inspired by Pastor Derek Morris. I know he's going to inspire us again this afternoon. We have some wonderful special music as well, and we're going to pray together. So may God continue to bless us as we worship this Sabbath afternoon together.
I'm excited to be with you again this afternoon at the Pennsylvania Conference Convocation as we talk about reaching everyone everywhere with the good news that there's a God who loves us with an immeasurable and unfailing love and that Jesus, our Savior, is coming soon. If you were with us this morning, we talked about the only way our mission can be accomplished is by the power of the Holy Spirit, following the teaching of Jesus for harvest workers. And I have a special gift for you. If you'd like to learn more, especially if you made a commitment this morning to say, by the grace of God, I choose to be a harvest worker by the power of the Holy Spirit. Just go to hopetv.org slash free gift and we'll send you a free audio book on the topic we studied this morning. Again, hopetv.org slash free gift. We'll send you an audio book download that will bless your life and share that with others who are sensing the call of God to be part of his harvest work by the power of the Holy Spirit. But right now, let's pray together as we continue this convocation studying about praying bold prayers by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this Sabbath convocation. We thank you for the blessings we have already received today. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would bless as we hear your word this afternoon. As we continue to respond to your Spirit's call, I pray that lives would be blessed today that hearts would be renewed today, that a settled conviction would come upon us to be your harvest workers by the power of the Holy Spirit is my prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. My topic this afternoon is praying bold prayers by the power of the Holy Spirit. It was clear from our study this morning that we have a mission to accomplish here in Pennsylvania Conference and around the world. I like what you've got as a theme, reaching everyone everywhere. And we discovered from our study this morning that we can only accomplish that goal by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our God-given mission, Jesus said, is to preach the gospel to every nation, go into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature, Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. We know that that task is impossible in our own strength. We can only accomplish our God-given mission by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we heard in that ancient prophet, it is not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And so we have the courage to pray that prayer, Lord of the harvest, I earnestly beg you to throw out laborers into your harvest and you have my permission to begin with me. And friend, I want to tell you today that when you pray this radical prayer, following the example of Jesus, the Lord of the harvest will throw you out exactly when and where he knows you will be most effective in his harvest work. <laughs> it's really an exciting journey that we're on united together in mission, realizing that we're all part of this great miracle of God. And the Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18 that we should continue in prayer. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Our ministry as harvest workers will be a prayer-saturated ministry. Maybe that's been the problem in the past. We, we pray occasionally, but we learned this morning we need to pray in the Spirit, enabled by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. This afternoon, I want to share with you one prayer that's been a profound blessing in my own life and ministry. It's a simple prayer, but maybe that's what makes it so powerful because it's a prayer I can easily remember. And it's a prayer, a bold prayer that challenges me to go beyond living life as usual and to realize all that God desires for me. 
It's a prayer that's embedded in an ancient genealogy, the prayer of Jabez. Take your Bible and look with me in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 10 records this short prayer. But if we're going to be harvest workers by the power of the Holy Spirit, we need to pray bold prayers. This is just one I would like to share with you today. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 4 verse 10, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil. Now, before we even begin to unpack this powerful prayer, which I believe is particularly relevant for harvest workers going in the power of the Holy Spirit. I just want you to notice what it says at the end of the verse. We don't know anything about this person. It's a very bold prayer he prays. But the end of the verse tells me in 1 Chronicles 4, verse 10, So God granted him what he requested. <laughs> this prayer is a bold prayer. And the Bible says God didn't say, that's a little too extreme, that's a little too outlandish. No, I believe God is waiting for us to pray bold prayers that are aligned with his will so that we can go out empowered by the Holy Spirit to be harvest workers for him. Perhaps you're thinking, who is this uh, fellow? Who is this individual that prays such a bold prayer? What do we know about this individual whose prayer is recorded in 1 Chronicles 4, verse 10? Well, the answer is not very much. The previous verse, verse 9 of 1 Chronicles chapter 4, gives us a little insight. It says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Uh, we've learned a couple of things there. He's more honorable than his brothers. That tells me that it is possible for you, it is possible for me to go beyond our natural circumstances. Uh, don't tell me, Pastor Derek, you know, nobody in my family has ever accomplished much for God. God can make you an exception in your family. Someone say amen out there. God can use you if you're willing to be a harvest worker by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're talking this afternoon about praying bold prayers like this man Jabez prayed. He was more honorable than his brothers, but he was called Jabez. You know, the word Jabez literally means he will cause pain. Well, what a name to give to a child. What's your name? Pain? I'm a pain, I cause pain, I am pain. I, I mean, that would be like calling your son or daughter loser. What a way to start life. <laughs> but Jabez does not allow the challenges. Maybe his mother had a difficult birth, I don't know, a very painful birth. Uh, maybe there was painful things happening in the family. We don't know why she called him Jabez. But somehow this young man transcended those difficulties. Somehow he went beyond his brothers who were not as honorable. Somehow he had courage to call out to the God of Israel. Now he lived long before the time of Jesus. So he didn't know what Jesus would later say in Matthew chapter 7 in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus said, ask, and it will be given to you. You see, when we pray in alignment with the will of God, we can have confidence that God will hear us, especially when we're praying in connection with our harvest work for him. Uh, this man Jabez, he didn't know where Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, if you then, I'm in the Sermon on the Mount, 
if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Jabez didn't know that. He just knew that the God of Israel was a great and awesome God, and even though he was called a pain, he chose to transcend his circumstances and he prayed a bold prayer. Let's look at the first phrase in this prayer, back to 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 10. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. <laughs> I have to smile because Jabez doesn't say, God, I know I'm a pain and uh, my mother says I'm a pain, so, but could you bless me a little? Or could you bless me once in a while? No. Jabez boldly comes to the throne of grace and he says, God, calls upon the God of Israel. He says, oh, that you would bless me indeed. Now, I want you to notice that he doesn't set any stipulations. That's what makes this prayer so powerful. When you come now as a New Testament Christian, this is long after the time of Jabez, we come and we pray in the name of Jesus, aligned with the will of Jesus. When we ask God to bless us, and we don't set restrictions and stipulations, He will give us the blessing that He knows we need. You say, Derek, you can't lose if you say, Lord, bless me according to your perfect plan. If we just took this first part of the prayer of Jabez. If you said, Pastor Derek, I, I'm, I want to be a harvest worker by the power of the Holy Spirit, reaching everyone everywhere, united in mission. I want to see miracles happen in the Pennsylvania Conference in the coming year. And you just added this one phrase of the prayer to your prayer time, to your prayer saturated life. Oh Lord, that you would bless me indeed according to your will. You would see miracles happen. I remember my first evangelistic meeting as a pastor. I'd grown up in a family uh, where my father was an evangelist, but my first experience as an evangelist was in northeastern Pennsylvania. We went to a little town called Sybertsville. We rented the fire hall. Now, I didn't know much about evangelism, but you know, when you ask God to bless you, He'll bless you abundantly. And so as I was thinking about what we should do for these meetings, I knew I needed help, and there was a young literature evangelist in the neighboring district by the name of Tim Goff. Now today, Tim Goff is the vice president of the Florida Conference, but back then he was a young literature evangelist. I was a young pastor in the neighboring district. We joined together, and I thought I need some help with some sermons so I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to talk to a great preacher. Now, I know some of you listening to my voice today, you remember that great preacher, C.D. Brooks. Do I have a witness out there? You say, yes, Pastor, I remember. Powerful preacher of the Word of God. Well, he had produced a series of recordings called the Breath of Life Evangelistic Series. And I listened to all of those tapes, and I was so deeply moved by them. I thought, I need a coach. Now you say, any coach will do, but somehow I prayed that the Lord would bless me abundantly. I decided to call Pastor C.D. Brooks. I said, Pastor Brooks, I'd like to use your evangelistic sermons for my evangelistic series. Is that okay with you? And Pastor Brooks said, absolutely. I said, do you have them written out? He said, no. They've kept telling me that I need to do that, but, but we've never done it. I said, well, I have the recordings. Now, to show you how long ago this was, they were on cassette tapes. Does anybody here even know what a cassette tape is? But I spent about 400 hours transcribing those cassette tapes for the Breath of Life evangelistic series, I believe guided by the Holy Spirit of God, standing on the strong shoulders of a great evangelist. And God blessed me as I did that. Somehow I not only got the content, but I got the Holy Spirit anointing. I got the enthusiasm of Pastor C.D. Brooks. One time we were having a question and answer period, 
and uh, Tim Goff, the literature evangelist, he was asking the questions he'd heard so much. He said to me, what do you think, Pastor Brooks? Well, a few of the church members snickered. The visitors had no idea what he was saying. My name wasn't Brooks, but you understand that God had blessed me through the ministry of Pastor C.D. Brooks. You know, when we pray, oh Lord, bless me, and don't just bless me a little, bless me indeed, God will surprise us with bountiful blessings. If the prayer ended there, it would be a powerful prayer. But the prayer goes on. It says, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Now you say, what's he asking for, more land? Well, I think it's more than speaking about a geographic area. It's speaking about a circle of influence. Jabez is saying, God bless me and enlarge my circle of influence. Notice again, he doesn't set a stipulation. Enlarge my territory to what's manageable for me. No, he's yielding to the God of heaven and saying, God, you enlarge my territory according to your plan. It's just like the prayer this morning where we give God permission to throw us out into his harvest work and we don't tell him where or when. We allow God to know when is the best time and the best place where we'll be most effective harvest workers. So Jabez says, enlarge my territory. Now, I don't know about you, my friend, but sometimes I feel limited by my own uh, inhibitions. Sometimes uh, I feel, well, someone else will have to do that, not me. But I want to challenge you today with the thought that higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's plan for you. If you're willing to say, God, I'm available. I want to be a harvest worker by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to pray bold prayers as I go out, praying in the Spirit on all occasions, a prayer-saturated life, a prayer-saturated ministry, whether a pastor or a layperson, wherever you put me, Lord, I'm going to pray in the Spirit on all occasions. And here's one prayer, bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. When I was a young pastor in Allentown, Pennsylvania, I'd just been ordained to the gospel ministry, and I received a gift from another great preacher, H.M.S. Richards Sr. Now, some of you may remember that name. He was the founder of the Voice of Prophecy radio broadcast. In fact, it was as a result of his ministry that my parents became Seventh-day Adventist Christians in Bristol, England. Pastor HMS Richards gave me a cassette tape and it said if I was a young minister again well I listened to that because I saw that God had blessed his ministry in remarkable ways and I thought uh, how is God going to enlarge my territory during this time bless me and enlarge my territory and then I heard Pastor Richards say you need to get on the radio Well, of course, he was a radio evangelist. You need to get onto the radio and you need to speak to your community. Now, before you say, oh, Pastor Derek, radio is expensive. I cannot afford to do that. Just ask God to enlarge your territory according to his plan, not your plan. Well, it was at that time that a businessman at the Allentown Church, Bob Becker, owned a Subaru car dealership, Becker Subaru, came and offered to underwrite a program on a local Christian radio station. It was just five minutes every weekday right before 12 noon. I think it was called Concern, and I didn't know what I was doing. But you know, when we ask the Lord to enlarge our territory according to His perfect plan, reaching everyone everywhere, God works in miraculous ways. Soon we added three broadcasts on Sunday morning, recording the sermon from the previous Sabbath. People in the community began to recognize my voice. It wasn't about me. They were hearing a word from the Lord. From that humble beginning in media ministry, who could have imagined what God would do? 
years later, invited to start an interactive Bible study on Hope Channel called Hope Sabbath School. Today, in more than 200 countries around the world, what a privilege to be part of a movement where God is enlarging our territory, not to make names for ourselves, but to honor his name and to call people into his kingdom. My friend, God has a good plan for you. If you say, Lord, bless me and enlarge my territory. If that was all that the prayer said, by the way, it says God heard his request, granted his request. He'd say, that's a bold prayer as I go out as a harvest worker by the power of the Holy Spirit, reaching everyone everywhere, starting right here in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. But God may enlarge my territory beyond that. You say, that's a powerful prayer, but the prayer is not finished. Jabez continues in 1 Chronicles 4, verse 10. It's recorded that your hand would be with me. Now, I want you to pause a moment. That may not sound that dramatic, but actually to pray for the hand of the Lord to be with you can change everything. In Acts chapter 11 and verse 21, speaking about the early Christians, we read these words. Acts chapter 11 and verse 21, Scripture says, And the hand of the Lord was with them, speaking of the early Christians in Antioch, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. When you pray and you say, Lord, bless me, not just a little, but according to your abundant grace, enlarge my territory. When you pray for the hand of the Lord to be with you, you'll experience the kind of miracles that they saw in Antioch where a great many believed and turned to the Lord. That same expression is used in Ezekiel chapter 37, where Ezekiel has a special work to do. Ezekiel chapter 37, it says there, the hand of the Lord was with him. The hand of the Lord, he says, came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. If you read on, my friend, in Ezekiel 37, God tells him to preach to the bones. When the hand of the Lord is upon you and the Spirit of God is with you, miracles will happen. Those dry bones come together. You know the song, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. But those bones don't stay dry. <laughs> Soon they're covered with flesh and become a great army. Ezekiel says, when the hand of the Lord is upon you, his testimony, miracles happen. There's another reference in 1 Kings where the hand of the Lord was upon the prophet Elijah. And the Bible says, when the hand of the Lord was upon the prophet Elijah, that he ran ahead of Ahab's chariot to Jezreel. That was more, <laughs> that was more my friends, than a marathon. But he ran ahead of the chariot because the hand of the Lord was with him. When you pray bold prayers like this simple prayer, you say, God, bless me, enlarge my ter territory, and, and Lord, let your hand be with me. You will see God work in amazing ways. There's a beautiful promise in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. It says, when you say, Pastor Derek, I don't feel that strong. My friend, just ask the hand of the Lord to be with you. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 40 and verse 31, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. I think that's what Elijah felt like when he ran ahead of the chariot. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. My friend, I can't promise you that the mission you're given will be easy. But I can promise you that when the hand of the Lord is with you, you will have the strength that you need. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. We're talking here about being harvest workers by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and that your hand would be with me. But there's one final part to the prayer, Jabez, that I don't want you to miss. Unfortunately, there are some harvest workers who do not finish well. You see, when you say, I choose to be a harvest worker by the power of the Holy Spirit, you become a target of the enemy. The enemy can see, not with the wisdom of God, but can somehow foretell that your influence will impact the kingdom of darkness, tear down, rescue people, bringing them out of darkness into God's marvelous light. And so you become an enemy of the kingdom of darkness. So this fourth request that Jabez prays in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 is crucially important. Having asked, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, comes the fourth request, and that you would keep me from evil. Now, various translations conclude the text by saying, that you would keep me from evil, that I uh, may not cause pain, New King James, uh, I will be free from pain, NIV, or it may not grieve me. There's some differences of opinion about that translation, but they all agree on the first part, that you would keep me from evil. And you know, that is the desire of the Lord. Jesus prayed in John chapter 17. I, I do not pray, he said, John chapter 17 and verse 15. I do not pray that you would what? Take them out of the world, John 17 in the great high priestly prayer. But he does pray that you should keep them from the evil one. That's why in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7, we are told to pray. Matthew chapter 6 verse 13. Deliver me from the evil one. Jabez had it right, didn't he? Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil. My friends, I've had experiences in my ministry where the enemy has sought to attack me just because I'm a harvest worker for God. You say, Pastor Derek, why would the enemy do that? That doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't he just let you do your thing and he'll do his thing? But you see, the enemy, just as God doesn't want anyone to be lost, the enemy doesn't want anyone to be saved. And so we need to pray as we go out as harvest workers. Oh, keep me from evil. Protect me from the evil one. I still remember a phone call I received. It was not long after leaving the Pennsylvania Conference to teach at Southern Adventist University. I received a call early in the morning from someone in the boys' dormitory. He said, Pastor Derek, can you come? Someone's cutting his arm with a box cutter, and there's darkness here. I remember praying for protection, going to the boys' dormitory. There we were praying together in the stairwell. And then the roommate said, come into the room. I came in to this dorm room. There was darkness there. I did not know how much danger I was in. We had prayed for the armor of God to protect us. I, I should have probably prayed the prayer of Jabez that you would keep me from the evil one, protect me from the evil one. As I walked in, I reached out my hand to touch this young man on the shoulder. He said, don't touch me. I learned later, after Jesus had set him free by the power of Jesus' name, that there was a desire to hurt me that night. This young man said to me, Dr. Morris, when you came into my room, I wanted to hurt you. I wanted to hurt the young man who was with you. His name was Andrew, one of my theology students, today a pastor in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I wanted to hurt you. He said, but I could not because you were clothed with fire. You see, when we pray, for the hand of the Lord to be with us for, and for him to keep us from the evil one. We have a protection against the kingdom of darkness. I was visiting in Australia 
some years ago, and two elderly sisters came up to me. They said, we want to give you a book. Now, I've been given a lot of books in my life, and some of them are good and some of them aren't so good. But this was an interesting book about their father, Norman Ferris, who had been a missionary in the Solomon Islands. And it was a story about his life and his mission. He certainly was a harvest worker by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in that book called Broken Stick, there was a story of Norman Ferris's visit to Guadalcanal. There in a village of Coilunutumria, I'm saying it as best I can, uh, the, the chief asked to learn more about Jesus. And Pastor Norman Ferris shared with them. And there was rejoicing in the village as they learned that Jesus loved them, that God had a good plan for their lives. But there was one person in the territory who was not happy. His name was Ngata, the devil priest. In fact, the enemy, the kingdom of darkness ruler, Satan, came to him and said, uh, go and kill this man. You say, Pastor Derek, how do you know that? Well, I'll tell you in just a moment. But Angata went under the cover of darkness, came to where Pastor Norman Ferris was preaching and the people were rejoicing. And at his opportune moment, he ran across through the crowd about to kill this servant of God, this harvest worker. In that moment, there wasn't much time to pray. But Pastor Ferris cried out, Lord, send your mighty, strong arm of power. And right at that moment, the devil priest was frozen in his track, sword in his hand. You see, no weapon that is fashioned against us will prosper. By the way, you say, Pastor Derek, how do you know? Well, that whole story you can read in Broken Stick, but <laughs> Ngata gave his heart to Jesus and became a preacher of righteousness. My friend, it's no secret what God can do. He can call us from the distractions of this world. Yes, he can call us even from the kingdom of darkness and set us free to be his harvest workers in these last days of earth's history. But we need to be praying in the spirit on all occasions. We need to be praying, oh, that you would bless me indeed, that you would enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil. That's one of many prayers. We ought to pray bold prayers in the power of the Holy Spirit. We ought to have a prayer-saturated life, united together in mission. And when we see God work in miraculous ways, my friends, just like I saw that night clothed with fire, just like Pastor Norman Ferris saw when that devil priest was frozen in his tracks, knowing that when we stand under the banner of Jesus, no weapon that is fashioned against us will prosper. We are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When we go as harvest workers by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will see God work in miraculous ways. Friend, is that your desire today? We've had this convocation because time is short. The goal to reach everyone everywhere, united in mission, not by might or power, but by my spirit. I'm going to pray one more time for you. And I want to invite you again to pray bold prayers in the name of Jesus. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for reminding us to pray in the Spirit on all occasions. We've just reflected on one prayer today, that you would bless us indeed and enlarge our territory, that your hand would be with us and that you would keep us from evil. But God, there are many more bold prayers. May we pray always in the Spirit on all occasions as we go out as your harvest workers by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we see miracles happen, God, we, we will be quick to give you all of the praise and all of the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Wow, that was such an inspiring message. It really touched my heart, and I know it touched yours as well. You know, this is the time to pray. We live in the last days. 
You look at what's taking place in our country and around the world. Have you ever seen it like this before? Jesus is ready to come. And we need to be praying like Jabez for God just to enlarge our influence and enable us to reach people through the power of God's Spirit. I believe, my friends, more than ever that what we need more than anything else is a fresh outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. And we're told that we can expect that pouring of the Spirit in answer to prayer. Ask, Jesus says, and you shall receive. I have a vision, I have a dream, and that is for us to have 3,000 people in Pennsylvania Conference praying daily for a large measure of God's Holy Spirit. 3,000 people. You know, God told Elijah that he had thousands who had not bowed the knee to Baal. And I believe that God has 3,000 of our members, you, ready to pray, ready to intercede on behalf of God's work. You know, when God looks down on this planet and he zooms in on the state of Pennsylvania, he's looking for faithfulness among his remnant church. We are the ones called, we are the ones tasked to give the three angels' message, the last opportunity to invite people to be ready for Jesus' return. And so God's looking to see, are we on our knees are we praying? Are we gathering our families together and interceding for our neighbors and our friends and our extended family members? Are we really seeking His Holy Spirit? My friend, I want to invite you to be part of a great revival movement that God is doing in our conference. We're seeing it all over this conference, the Holy Spirit moving in powerful ways, and we can all be a part of that through prayer. Today, if you are worshiping with us in your church, you should have a copy of a card. If you're not in a church family right now, but you are watching us on Facebook, you can click the link there on the Facebook page, and you can go to our website, and you can also fill out this card. This card is an important card, and it invites you to pray. We're looking, as I said, for 3,000 prayer warriors and we'd like to have that registered on our website. Uh, if you do the card, you give it into your pastor, we'll get it back at the conference office. And we're looking for 3,000 prayer warriors. So if you'd like to be part of this great movement of God, I want you to t check that first box on your card. It says, yes, I want to unite together to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit here in Pennsylvania by praying daily at 1.20 p.m. We're looking at 1.20 p.m. simply because we have this great initiative to have 120 simultaneous evangelistic meetings going throughout our conference. And God's going to give us that opportunity to do that. We're going to do it in spring of 2021. So 120 evangelistic meetings. But 1.20, if that works for you, you can check this. If you need to adjust the time, you can still check this and adjust it to a time that works best for you. But we're looking for 3,000 prayer warriors, and you want to be part of that, just say, yes, I want to unite together to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit here in Pennsylvania. And then the second box says, yes, I want to unite together with my local church to reach everyone everywhere, beginning with those in my community, family, and friends. You know, Dr. Derek Morris talked about Pray for the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth reapers into his harvest because the harvest is white and ready to be reaped. So as we pray for God's outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we also have an opportunity to say, Lord, here I am, send me, use me. And you may feel like <laughs> you, you don't know what to do. You wouldn't know what to say. You might be afraid. But you know, God can adapt the opportunities to use you to your personality. He can use you just like you are. You don't have to be a Derek Morris. You don't have to be somebody that's a great evangelist. You just need to be you, ready and willing to be used by God. And God can give you a tailor-made experience where he'll use your personality and who you are to reach people. But first you have to say, Lord, here I am. Send me. So I invite you to do that, to go on an exciting journey with God and watch God answer prayers in miraculous ways and use you. Check that second box with me, will you? Yes, I want to unite together with my local church to reach everyone everywhere, beginning with those in my community, family, and friends. 
And then lastly, yes, I want to unite by daily looking for opportunities to invite people to church and to study the Bible. Again, it's amazing the opportunities God will bring your way when you start praying, Lord, send me opportunities to invite someone to church or to give them a Bible study, just to hand them a piece of literature, truth-filled literature. There are friends, are people all around us who are looking, and God wants to use us. He wants to use you and me to reach them. So do that with me as well. Check that third box and say, Lord, here I am. Use me. I'm going to be looking for opportunities to bring people to church, to invite them, and to study the Bible, and then watch God work. Be sure to give us your name, the church you attend, and your email address, and be part of this wonderful movement of God. 3,000 people in Pennsylvania united in prayer, inviting God, imploring Him for the outpouring of His Spirit. Friends, what we've experienced today is, is more than worship. It's more than a program. It's more than just an inspiring time. This is a movement of God. And when you read the Bible and you see the great movements that took place in ancient Israel, when they would circulate back and forth between apostasy and revival, the revival periods were sweet. The revival periods were, were just imbued with a fresh outpouring of God's Spirit where God was real to people. That can happen in our day too. God is the same today as He was yesterday and He will be forever. He wants to work in our churches. He wants to work in our conference. He wants to work in your communities, and certainly He wants to work in your life. We can do that. We can experience it. And we have wonderful promises. Jesus Himself says, ask and you shall receive. The Spirit of Inspiration tells us that the Holy Spirit will come in answer just to a simple prayer of pleading for the Holy Spirit. Friends, it is the time, it is the day. No matter where this finds you in your life right now, maybe you've really been on fire for God for quite some time and you've been longing for this day. Or maybe you've just been warming a, a church pew and you've sensed something's been missing in your life. Or maybe you're just reconnecting with God's people or you're coming to church just learning about uh, who we are and what we're about. No matter where you find yourself in life right now, you can find yourself right in the center of God's will by being part of this prayer movement. And I know God will use you. I know He'll speak to you. Commit to it. Make it a habit every day. Pray with us at 1.20 in the afternoon or some other time that best suits you. Pray with us daily. Write it down. Put it on a post-it note. Put it on your mirror in the bathroom. Put it beside your bed. Maybe put it in your kitchen on the refrigerator. And keep praying for God. And as we keep praying for God, we're going to watch God do fabulous, amazing things because now is the hour. Let me pray together with you. Father in heaven, we have been blessed today beyond measure. Your Holy Spirit has been present. We've been challenged, Father, by Pastor Derek's sermons. We realize that we have not prayed enough, Lord. And yet you've given us that gift. You've said, just come and talk to me. Come and open your heart to me. Come and ask me and I will pour out blessings. And here we are, Lord, in the day, in a day in earth's history where we are seeing Bible prophecy being fulfilled around us. And we can watch the, the steady approach of these last day events in the evening news and, and on our devices as we read the news. So, Lord, this is the hour. You've told us to pray in the hour of the latter rain for the latter rain. And so we're coming right now, and we are praying for your Holy Spirit. Lord, we, we can't live righteous lives on our own strength. We need you in our, our hearts, Lord. You know our humanity. You know our sinfulness. You know our characters. And Father, only you can cleanse our hearts of sin and fill us with Christ-likeness. So we pray for fresh personal infilling of your spirit in our lives. We confess our sins, Lord. We ask you to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. And may we just cleave more closely to you, Jesus. I pray for a revival in our lives, Lord. I pray for a revival in our churches, a revival of primitive godliness, a seeking after you with all our heart. Lord, we know the hour is late, 
that this is not the time to just go through the motions of life or the motions of church, but this is the time that you've given us precious probationary moments to seek you with all our hearts. So we do that now. And then, Father, we pray for a, a full outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon your church here in Pennsylvania and around the world. We pray that we might be a light to the rest of the world of what happens when a people dedicate themselves to prayer. I pray for our 3,000 prayer warriors. I pray for them in faith, Father. They will sign up on our website or turn these cards in and that we will see you do amazing things as we claim the promise, asking you shall receive. So bless each of us, Lord, as we've made these uh, decisions today and we've committed to asking you to use us, to invite people to church, maybe give a Bible study. We've said we want to pray daily and that we want to be part of, of seeing an outpouring of your spirit. Use us and may you be glorified, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you for joining us and may God bless you as you start on this wonderful adventure.